Welcome to Pimpy's Investment Chat, where we keep investment talk simple. And here's your host, Pimpy. What is going on out there, peeps? We haven't done anything on Vietnam in quite a long time, so let's go ahead and get back into Vietnam Dong so we can talk about it. Talk about some stacks, man. Look at these stacks. You know, well, there's some of you out there that ask stacks about this big, but I'm just saying, you know there's a lot of you out there that wish you had stacks like this. Before we get started, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. If you're not a subscriber, please do so, because when you do, it helps out the channel, and I certainly do appreciate it. If you're thinking about buying gold and silver, head on over to our friends at Miles Franklin. The link will be down below in the description. When you make your purchase, make sure you use promo code PIMPY, P-I-M-P-Y, and they'll take care of you. If you have any additional questions, you can reach us over here at this phone number or over here at this particular email. For all orders over $10,000, reach out by email and we'll make sure that you get a great deal. So come on over to Miles Franklin and add to your precious metal inventory. All right, looks like Vietnam is following the same path as everybody else, including Iraq. Vietnam, while positioned towards cashless society, UK Newswire, Vietnam's digital payment ecosystem is undergoing a remarkable transformation driven by tech-savvy population, government initiatives, and innovative financial solutions, according to Finextra, a leading UK news wire and information source for worldwide financial technology. So look, everybody's heading towards that. They call it cashless society. Yeah, I get that. But really what they're saying is the central bank digital currency. That's what we don't want to see happen. It says in its writing posted on July the 3rd, it highlighted one of the most significant trends in Vietnam's digital payment landscape is the rapid growth of e-wallet. With major players like Momo having gained immense popularity, the e-wallets offer a wide range of services from bill payments and mobile top-ups to online shopping and even ride-hailing services. So congrats to Vietnam, who's following down the path of the New World Order. Vietnam's GDP growth reaches 6.42% in the first half. That's ass-kicking, actually. Vietnam's economy grew by 6.42% in the first six months of 2024, slightly lower than it figured to be at 6.58. Wow. <laughs> so it is slightly behind where it was in 2022. Vietnam has a tremendous GDP. It's constantly growing. It has been for the past 30 years. Vietnam's economy grew by 6.42% in the first six months of 2024, slightly lower than the figure of 6.58 in the same time of 2022 within the 2020 and 2024 period. The General Statistic Office announced at a press conference in Hanoi back in June 29 of the economy's total value added growth the sectors of ARCO forestry, fishery, industry, construction, and service grew by 3.38%, 7.51%, and 6.64, contributing to 5.96 and 44.28 and 49.76, respectfully. Now, this is good, but this is huge growth. Look at that. The GSO also highlighted that within the service sector, export surged aligning with the global recovery and consumer demand, positively affecting the country's economic growth. We've been talking about Vietnam now for, good Lord, the past four years, and every year they're doing good. They almost were the sole survivors of the uh, Rona. I mean, their economy was kicking ass when everybody else's was down. Had they uh, had somebody to export to and work in the ports, their economy would have been so much more stronger than it was. Regarding the economic structure in the first half, the Arco Forestry Fishery accounted for 11.55%, while the industry, construction, and service arena areas made up 36.44 and 43.35%. So service has the biggest growth. Vietnam is always kicking ass, but I wanted to look up and I did some research on where they are currently and where they're going for 2024. First, I want to talk about the Vietnam Dong. In 2024, the U.S. dollar to the Vietnam Dong exchange experienced fluctuations throughout the year so far. The average exchange rate for the year is one U.S. dollar will get you 24,968 Vietnamese Dong. Overall, the USD appreciated against the Vietnam Dong by 4.89% in 2024 so far. The year's not over, but even so, 5% for the first half of the year, it's a pretty big jump. As far as Vietnam's economy in 2024, 
The Vietnamese economy is forecasted to show signs of recovery in 2024, with growth expected to reach 5.5%. Now look, everybody's aiming for 3%, but Vietnam is up there at 5.5%. The growth is projected to gradually increase to 6% in 2025. The recovery is characteristic by a mix of positive indicators, including so their exports are on the path of recovery, with real exports expected to grow by 3.5% in 2024. Consumption and private domestic investment. Consumption and private domestic investment are growing more gradually, but are still showing positive trends. Real total investment in private consumptions are projected to increase by 5.5 and 5% this year. Real estate, a turnaround in the real estate sector is anticipated later in 2024 and into the next year, which is expected to bolster domestic demand as investors and consumers regain confidence. Real estate has always been a big deal for Vietnam. Physical policy. Sustainable physical policy support is recommended to reinforce the recovery with a focus on expediting infrastructure investment projects financed by public resources. Monetary policy. The scope for the additional interest rate cuts is limited is due to the interest rate differential between domestic and international rates. Physical deficit. The fiscal deficit is expected to widen to 1.6% of GDP in 2024 by narrowing it to 1.1% in 2025. So they, you know what, Vietnam is doing phenomenal. If you guys remember, Vietnam don't have all the same hangups as Iraq does. There's no sanctions. There's nothing holding them back. They just choose to keep their currency low. There's a lot of corruption there and there's a lot of cleanup of corruption that still continues to this day. Financial sector stability. Ensuring stability in the financial sector remains crucial, especially in the managing risk associated with increasing bad debts, particularly due to declining asset values in the real estate market, which is funny because up here it talks about how real estate is starting to boom again. Infrastructure investment. Investing in public infrastructure projects beyond immediate economic stimulus is highlighted as essential for addressing critical infrastructure gaps, fundamental and long-term economic growth. While every country should invest in its infrastructure, especially when infrastructure is uh, the main blood flow of any country. Innovative startup supports. Recommendations include revamping ecosystem support programs, streamlining regulations, enhancing academia and public research contributions, and empowering universities and research institutions for technology transfers to startups. It seems like every time we read about Vietnam, they're always doing good. Now, whether or not they'll revalue their currency, that depends on how much of a cleanup they do on their corruption. We know there's a lot of cleanup taking place now, and it should continue. We'll see what happens from there. Anyways, that's it for now. I look forward to hearing from you. I'm out.